Namaste, yogis. Namaste. Hmm. Yogi Tim here, Center Point Wellness. Just owned in. That's so beautiful. Been doing some talking and some teaching upon the eight limbs of yoga. So all the little wonderful nuggets of yoga, such as meditation, such as asanas, you know, pranayamas, all these wonderful things that all kind of blend together in a yoga practice, which is so cool and so magical that <clears throat> the eight limbs, just the, the topic of it, really breaks that down so that you can identify really what is happening scientifically in each uh, part of your practice. And uh, <clears throat> the first, uh, the, uh, the first six that I've spoken about already in previous videos are more to do with your physical practices of yoga, with what you do in your, uh, your studio, your serene space, this space, you know, right here, right now, my studio is where I practice my yoga, physically practice my yoga and my meditation and sit down and do it. Now there's two limbs, <clears throat> which are more of the roots, okay? They're more of the roots of, the, of this yoga tree and this life, tree of life, right? And they're called the yamas and the niyamas, and they are made up of other pieces that take your, uh, your yoga practice and the things that you learn in your yoga practice, and it, and it lets it overflow into your life, into areas of your life as like lifestyle choices, you know. So it's pretty neat how, how these things can work out and to be a good yogi. This, it's kind of like in a way the, uh, almost like a natural 10 commandments for, for living life, to live life peacefully and to be able to be in harmony with, uh, with nature, with God, with the Tao, with <clears throat> all these spiritual teachers that, we, that have come before us, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, uh, Krishna, you know, you name it, all of these, uh, these, all of these people were in the flow with, with the Yamas and the Niyamas. Uh, and the first one that will, that I'll talk about for is the Yamas. So this is one branch or one section of the roots is the Yamas. Okay. So the Yamas, <clears throat> the first one that I want to talk about is Ahimsa. Ahimsa meaning nonviolence, nonviolence, absolutely nonviolence. So doing your best to only be compassionate, kind, loving as, as a human. Sounds pretty simple, right? <clears throat> However, right here in that throat center can be amassing all kinds of weird negative stories about yourself or other people as you see them, as you experience things, and that's a level of violence. Stepping on a bug consciously is violence. Saying harmful words to someone else <clears throat> is, is violence. Even watching it on TV uh, is violence. So watching it on the news is violence. Is propagating, is, is allowing this violence to continue to spread in the mind and in the vibration of humans and it continues exponentially out there. So practicing ahimsa, non-violence. <clears throat> the next part of the yamas is, the next root is satya. Satya. These are Sanskrit words. Satya meaning truth. Living truth. Living according to your truth. And you know that feeling, that gut feeling inside where you know it's right and you know it's wrong. You just know. You don't need laws. You don't need rules. You don't need these. Other, you don't even need the yamas, the niyamas, and the eight limbs. You just know. You can feel it in there. That's your truth. Saying your truth. <clears throat> Not limiting your truth, but saying your truth. Satya. Also saying your actual truth to yourself. Truth that you love yourself. Truth that you're happy with yourself. You love exactly who you are because God made you exactly who you are in this moment for the exact reason that the universe flows the way it does because without you in it as you are, it doesn't happen this way. You are important. So Satya, that's a good one. Asteya is the next one. Asteya. So this is, you know, you go to the biblical sort of things of non-stealing, right? Non-stealing. Don't just, if it doesn't belong to you, then don't take it. If it doesn't, uh, if it's gifted to you, that's great. If you have it and you desire to share something, do, do that as well. Also, don't steal things uh, from yourself, right? Don't steal energy from yourself from certain areas of your life 
uh, and put it somewhere where it's unhealthy. So you're taking healthy energy and putting it in unhealthy places, uh, unhealthy patterns, unhealthy addictions, unhealthy stories, unhealthy limiting beliefs that you're carrying on. So non-stealing, let everybody just live their life, you know, like encourage everybody to be who they are in, in life and live this way. You know, this is just a yogic uh, way of living. So asteya, non-stealing. Then there's, excuse me, uh, brahmacharya. This is the, the, the challenging one for most of us that live on planet Earth is non-indulgence, practicing non-indulgence. Pra knowing when something is just an experience to be had, you know, a food to enjoy, a, uh, you know, something, you know, a, a, an environment to be in, a certain, you know, travel to have, uh, whatever it is, knowing the difference between uh, experiencing life and uh, indulgence. You know, indulgence, we can tend to drum down into like addiction. So like a substance that you would consume without or something you would do, not just a substance, you can exercise addictively. And it's good to be addicted to certain things to a level that is a standard of life. But when it's an addiction or an indulgence, then it can lead to manic states of highs and lows you hit it because you want to feel a certain way and have a certain trajectory from the indulgence of it whether it be food whether it be alcohol whether it be exercise whether it be sex whatever it is and then when you don't have it you come crashing down and you don't just hit that median point again you go whew, down below it and then you have to come back up again kind of neat but also, if you're to practice more of the non-indulgent way, the brahmacharya, you can do this. Some people, some yogis go as far as uh, celibacy, you know, like practicing celibacy, which I don't think is necessarily a healthy way to do it. But uh, it's my opinion. Everybody has their ways. So uh, I say just, you know, being mindful of your consumption, being mindful of, uh, you know, practicing... Uh, some abstinence right practice some abstinence but i'm not saying permanent abstinence but just like a you know knowing when you can uh, jump in and when you don't uh, when you you need to ease off you know again back to uh, the the satya the truth knowing your truth knowing that truth within you helps oh and this last one here oh my gosh i have to, this this word I, i'm not, not as familiar with with saying so uh, i hope i don't botch it for any of the other yogis out there aparigara aparigara non-possessiveness so non-attachment as the buddhists say uh non-possessiveness let go of the the idea that you need to have things own things uh to be uh held in a certain status or quality of life in your world in your realm uh, possessing, say, a material good, like you have to have a certain vehicle, like a BMW, to look in the role of, say, you're a realtor, that you have to drive this to be, you know, held as that you make a certain amount of money and sell a certain amount of uh, uh, quantity of homes, blah, 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 blah. Or there's also non-possessiveness of, you know, just your the way you look, you know, just don't be possessive of that. Right now you have to look this way and that. If you don't look that way in 10 years, you have to find a way to get back to looking that way. Uh, hair dyes, plastic surgeries, whatever. Uh, that's, that's possessiveness on the body, possessiveness on relationships of just holding things too tightly. Like sand, if you hold sand too tightly, it just squirts out of your hand. Uh, so non even over like thoughts, non-possessiveness over thoughts and patterns and experiences and emotions and practicing just being here now and experiencing the new nows you're you're using the yoga to create your life the way that you and god design it to based on your inner truth so you're going back through the ahimsa you're not there's non-violence so you're creating that purification of voice within yourself truth so you're listening to that truth to be able to say it to yourself and project it then you're practicing the asteya, so non-stealing. Why would you have to steal anything if you're living according to your own truth? Everything that you are 
to be having, doing, or being is right here, right now, and God will keep providing it to you as you go. So you don't need to follow the uh, the stealing and criminal routes, you know, and there's brahmacharya. So if you're going along these routes and you're enjoying life, then you don't have the need to uh, escape or or find some, some other way uh, of indulgence to get some highs out of it and experience it because life as you're on your true pattern, will continue to fluctuate and give you lessons to learn. <clears throat> Which brings us to a parigara, again, the non-possessiveness, so just the detachment or the, yeah, the removal of attachment, even removing the attachment to, say, uh, limiting beliefs, removing those attachments, the fears of not being good enough, smart enough, fast enough, strong enough, all those things. So non-possessiveness to those thoughts so you can be who you are, uh, non-possessiveness to always experiencing happiness and joy, uh, non-possessiveness to being experiencing disparity, um, non-possessiveness towards uh, the fear of death, non-possessiveness towards the fear of living safely through life to death, non-possessiveness over life. Just be here now and get all these really cool experiences. And then as you do your yoga practices and you live through these experiences of knowing your truth and experiencing who your truth is and your connection, your spiritual connection with God, these will be part of your lifestyle naturally as you practice yoga consistently. And these were where you'll notice that your life changes because you'll know that truth. And that's the yamas. This is the Yamas. I'm Yogi Tim, sending you all kinds of beautiful love today. And this is a teaching on the eight limbs. Uh, I encourage you and I invite you to hit the like, the subscribe, and the shares on my uh, YouTube channel. Share it to your friends, share it to your family, share it to, share it, uh, share it everywhere you can. Like Just share the light, share this information to help people uh, with the tools and the technology to be uh, feeling amazing inside and that the world outside can be amazing as well. But most importantly, that you feel amazing on the inside and that you share that light and that I share that light and you share that light and we all share that light with each other so that we can all feel amazing inside. And even when the outside doesn't always match what we want it to look like or think it should look like, that we can still feel good inside. We can still feel great here knowing that this is all a lesson and we're, we're working our way to growing into that next person or next um, uh, incarnation of our physical selves here on planet Earth together. So there's the Yamas. Check out my, um, my live stuff, my live classes on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, Yin Yoga on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Kundalini Yoga on Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, private sessions of Reiki Healing. This is, these are all online, by the way, from the comfort of your own home. Slip into your own little studio. Reiki Healing Sessions, Life Coaching Sessions. Beautiful. I'm Yogi Tim. So grateful you're here. So, so grateful. Love sharing the magic and the light. Namaste, yogis.